Hey, Buster. Buster. Oh, he loves you. Oh, he's blue. He is. You got big pink ears. How come your ears are so hot? He's, don't mess with my ears. Leave them alone. Can't you just pet me? Can't you but just do what I tell you to are. do? Sometimes they're darker and other times they're light pink. <laughs> my God, they're huge. And they're really hot right now. Buster, you're worse than Josh. You got gigantic ears. Josh's ears used to get pink and hot. Hot and pink too. Well, maybe they're maybe they're ear brothers. <laughs> okay, I'm done with the cat. No, but but he's not done with you. <laughs> Shall I put some tunes on? You have your earrings are pretty. Mm -hmm. They're my rainbow warrior earrings. Oh. Rainbow warrior. You, that's the way. That's a sign that he loves you. You're just like the big doggy in the cartoon. <laughs> you are. You get to be the big dog. I don't want you, Buster. What do you think? What are you doing? You think I want you on my lap? Bite him. Oh. <laughs> you stay away from that. Oh. Look at the butt. Yeah, talk to the butt. Let us get the shafts from the other side. Now this takes a little different approach on these shafts because I don't really want to put grease in there. All I want to do is put a little bit of oil. Okay, now we have a slightly different challenge on these shafts now in that we don't really want to put grease on those as I, I've said ad nauseum. What we do want to do is put a little bit of oil in the places that they move. So let's see what we can find here. You see that? Look how smooth they're turning, man. You see where that pinion gear is, it goes up against the plate. There's a shaft down in there that needs to get a little bit of lubricant. I'm going to use what I always use. And uh, you, you know, you do what you want. I find this stuff works very well. Uh, this is Singer sewing machine oil. It's a Singer all-purpose machine oil. And that's exactly what it is. Singer sells it because it works so great in their sewing machines. But it works really well in this too. I have found that it lasts a long time doesn't dry, doesn't get sticky nearly as much as some others, your mileage may vary and you are very welcome to do whatever you like. And I know I don't have a uh, needle applicator right now. I, I know I should, but this works okay. It's a little messier. I'll get a needle applicator. I've been scolded a couple times by some people for not doing that, but it's okay. Now that will work its way down into the where the shaft goes through that. There's a bushing in that plate. It'll work its way through there. Meanwhile, while I'm getting that working, working out, I'm going to put a little oil right up in here where this shaft pokes through this pinion gear. I can just touch that right there. That'll work fine. Any excess I'll dry off when I'm all done. Okay, you want to turn it right away so it gets working in there. Look at that. It's getting better and better all the time. Very nice. Now if you look at this bushing right here, it's hard to see it with the way this is positioned, but at the very top of this bushing up against this plate, it spins inside, you know, it rides, rides against this plate. And uh, there are some contact surfaces there that I just want to make sure that, that if they are rubbing that they're lubricated. So I'll put a little lubricant right there. And we'll go ahead and let it work in. It's getting better, man. Right behind this gear here, right there above where the spring sits against the uh, gear, 
there's a place where you can get some access to the shaft uh, for that gear. Okay, right here, now you watch this gear here. You watch the, what happens there. You can see that there is a point of possible friction too. Underneath this spring here, where the shaft goes in here, so I'm going to put a little. I'm going to pull the spring away just a hair. You want to be careful when you do this, so you don't unhinge that, unhook that spring. If if you're real careful, see if I can show you. You pull it back just enough, and you can see there's a bushing in this front plate that this shaft goes through, and it connects up to the uh, tuning condenser. You want to put a little oil right there. Uh, I don't want to keep fussing with it, so I'm just going to do the messy way, and I'll wipe off all the excess after it's worked into the hole, into the, the hole, all right? Now, I'm going to get that uh, oil off of that spring right away, because I don't want it spreading and getting everywhere making a mess. So, let me get that, all right? Put the spring back. Okay. And I see a dirty spot that I missed right there. You want these things to be clean and shiny. Pretend that you're back in boot camp and your, uh, your barracks are being inspected. The drill sergeant's mad and you're the next one in line. You want to make sure you've done this work. See the point. What I what I what I want to get it to is when you let go of this, that thing should unwind itself. It's almost there. It keeps wanting to. You put another drop of oil in that spot. Like I said, the excess will run off, and then I'll be able to clean it up. Hard for me to do this and have you see it too. Oops. See, that's the problem. If I go with the right angle that I want to, I, I get in your way. So. You just have to pardon my mess until I get it squared away. I'm meticulous about this because the way that this feels when you're tuning it is a big part of where the satisfaction will come from for the guy that owns this radio and uses it all the time. If this feels silky smooth like it was supposed to, then he's going to love the radio. If this feels clunky and rough, well then he's going to think the radio isn't a very good radio. He's not going to, not going to use it much and he's not going to want to take care of it. You want to give this that premium feel. This was a premium radio and you want to make sure that the folks that are using it these days still get that same nice silky smooth feel that they got back in the day. Wow, we're getting there, man. We're getting there. Since I am turning this back and forth so much, I'm going to put a little bit of deoxid concentrate on these fingers here and uh, just let it do its thing. I typically don't use much of this stuff because it takes so long to dry, but I'm not going to be putting the juice to this radio for a while. So I, I have the time to allow it to dry. And this stuff is con conductive until it's dry. Keep that in mind. Um, if you go using this, I made that mistake, and then you think it's dry enough and you turn on whatever it is you're using it on, um, you want to make sure that you don't want conduction wherever this stuff is. Wow, that's feeling nice. Okay, you'll find as you work on this, you'll, you'll see little dirty spots that you didn't notice or you didn't get to before because it's going round and around. You'll see new spots will come into view and when they do, get them clean because any dirt and stuff will find a way to migrate where you don't want it to be. For those of you that have built engines, you know what I mean when I say, uh, you know, clean. This is, we're not talking about wipe it down with an, with an old nasty towel. We're talking it needs to be shiny and there needs to be no contaminants. 
because just like building an engine, you get contaminants in the works and things don't work too well. At least they don't, they won't long term. Something else you'll notice is that as you get lubricant, you know, the oil in some places, some of it, the excess will run out the ends of shafts and it'll carry dirt with it. You can get that dirt out of there right away. It's almost to the point where I have to hold it now to keep it in position. That's where I want it. You just want to run this and run this until you feel comfortable that it's all the way clean. Okay, it's starting to be get to where it won't it wants to take off on its own. See that? That's where I need it to be. Or with the slightest nudging, it'll want to take off. Sometimes you don't get them quite there, and then you just have to operate it for a few days, and it gets there. When it starts to pull back on its own, when you release it, then you know you're okay. Okay, there we go, guys. Let me put that clip back on the end of that shaft that I took it off of, right down here, and then we can call this thing good. Yeah, if I can get my fingers on it. Now, the last thing I will do is take a just something absorbent and just get any excess oil that got anywhere because we don't want much on there. This oil will just leave a really fine film. That's how it works. I've seen it in sewing machines and it works real nice. And that fine film will still be there. I've done a sewing machine and then going back and checked a, more than a year later like when I do the next tune-up and found that oil is still plenty wet and that's a sewing machine that got used a bit. One more time around, and we'll call it a good. We'll call it the end. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, good deal. All right, let's get on to those grommets. Okay, uh, I'll be back in a minute, and I'll have those grommets ready. Whilst I go look for grommets, I'm going to go ahead and take this hardware and drop it in here so I can clean it. I'll just uh, soak them in a little bit of thinner and let that sit for a while. And then that'll soften that material up and it'll come out, come off of there pretty easily. Just kind of let that sit in that puddle for a bit. And uh, I'll go find the grommets that'll fit this guy. Then I'm going to go get my box of grommets. Buster. Buster. Okay, I found some nice rubber grommets that fit perfectly. I've already put two of them in and I'm getting ready to install the third one. Just so I can show you, they're about the right size. Maybe a hair smaller, but remember this guy here, this old one is squished out and they all get a little bigger, you know, in diameter when they get squished out. So let me go ahead and put this grommet in here. 
already lubricated it with the the uh, ancient technician secret and uh, get it in and work it with the screwdriver like so making sure that it's through you know the whole lip is in on both sides you can check that too by moving it back and forth in the hole okay there we go all three grommets I'm looking at these wires and they are a little dirty but they're they look good so I'm going to take a q-tip and I'm going to clean them with just a little bit of thinner just to spruce them up you see it takes a lot of dirt off but otherwise they're in good shape and no need to replace things that are in good shape you want to keep things original if you can Now it won't look quite so pretty once it starts to dry, but it will be clean. Let me get that uh, grid cap. One thing's for sure though guys, lacquer thinner is hard on your fingers. It's up to you what you do about that. I've been using it for so long that I don't even care anymore. My fingers get have a hard time in the winter time anyway all right so that grid cap is pretty clean a little bit of old rosin in there but not worth getting too excited about okay when it dries you start to see the hairs from the uh, q-tips all over it you just brush those off it won't hurt anything and it'll be a nice clean wire. Makes a difference. Let's do the other one, then we'll go ahead and put that uh, bracket back on here. If you're wondering why I have blue tape on top of these uh, oscillator and uh, and RF transformer cans, is because um, the cans being aluminum, they were shining a little bit and giving my camera fits as far as uh, picking out the good white balance. So you cover them with blue and it helps it to balance that out. It isn't quite so bright, so the camera knows what uh, uh, what quote-unquote aperture setting to come up with. And uh, the blue actually helps the white balance, so the colors look better. That's my uh, that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Okay guys, let's go ahead and uh, we're just going to put this, well we don't put that in place yet until we get that hardware all cleaned. I forgot about that. So let me, let me go ahead and make sure, let me go ahead and make sure this is all clean and then I'll get it ready to install. So that's pretty dull, you don't really want to watch that. I'll be right back. Well, that lacquer thinner softened that gum rubber up nicely. It makes it easy to get it off there and get it clean. Lacquer thinner is wonderful stuff, man. Does it smell a little strong? I guess. After years of painting cars, that smell doesn't bug me. Um, is it a little bit flammable and maybe even dangerous? Yeah, sure. Okay, driving is dangerous too. Um, you know, this... Uh, you go hunting, well, you might get shot by another hunter who thinks you're the, the great antelope and he, that he wants to take, take you home for dinner. So, you know, all kinds of things that are dangerous. The key is to know what to do to, to uh, prevent mishap or bad things from happening, even in dangerous situations. So with lacquer thinner, I know, open a window, open two windows, ventilate. If you can get cross ventilation, in other words, air goes in one side of the room and out the other, maybe in one window and out another window. That's ideal. You got that situation going on, your furnace or your water heater will never know the lacquer thinner was there. But if you don't open a window, the fumes from the lacquer thinner, the vapors, they're going to gather up in a little cloud on the floor and they're going to migrate right to your water heater where the pilot light is and uh, they're going to go boom. So you want to avoid that at all costs if you can, all right? Now this old lacquer thinner, I'll set it aside. I might drop something else in there to clean in a bit. Okay, we are back. 
We're going to go ahead and drop a washer on each one of these. Okay. Now, rather than put the bushing on there, we're going to put the bushing inside these grommets. It's a tight fit on these, okay? It would be less tight if I got this one all the way clean. It's a tight fit. Use a little bit of magic lubricant and you can get that in there. See how nice that looks? Looks real good. Okay, so I'll take this out in the second one. A little bit of magic lubricant. Look away. Drop that in there. The tight fit is a good thing. There we go. Okay, one more. Perfect. Look at that. Okay, ready to go. Now, of course, we want to take this bracket now and drop it down onto the tuning condenser. Hey, check out these wires, man. The color is coming out nicely. They're actually a real nice, a real nice black color, not an icky color like they were before. Okay, drop this on. Because everything is a tight fit, it requires just a little more effort maybe to get it lined up. It's okay. That just means it's going to do its job. Oh, dumb, 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 dumb. I've done this before. I forgot to remove those screws down there. And you know what? I've bolted it down part way and then thought, well, I'll remove the screws and I'll bolt it down the rest of the way. You cannot get these screws out, of course, with that bracket in place. Okay, so you want to, you know, just take them out of there. Wifey just sent me a note saying she's making me. Uh, some eggs and sausage and toast for a, a kind of a, a breakfast at dinner tonight, this Sunday night. She just sent me a note saying she's uh, putting the eggs on, so I need to go up there in a minute. Wifey doesn't have the energy these days to do much of that, so when she feels like cooking, I, I treasure that. And I make sure I let her know how much I appreciate it. All right, so let me just put, I'll put this on there and I'll turn off the video and I'll come back after I've eaten. Maybe I'll be in a good mood after eating some nice yummy eggs. Okay, guys, there we go. Now we'll, we'll go ahead and bolt this down in just a minute. Let me go eat my, uh, my dinner. All right, guys, I've gone ahead and mounted these grommets up. As I showed you before, I've had my dinner. It was really good, too. Over easy eggs, a little bacon, a little sausage, and a big glass of orange juice. That's the kind of dinner I could have every day. Before I put these three on, I just remembered I want to go ahead and mount these screws. And if you're thinking about it, I realize I'm not I don't really need to put star washers under these. In fact, it might interfere with the little flanges that they already have on them. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these screws in, get them started. I'm telling you, these grabber screwdrivers are a real blessing. I don't even know if I can find one now. I should go looking for them because this is old. Okay, tighten those babies down. Actually, I'll tighten those down once I get these mounted up a little bit. I always like to kind of tighten all the th all the different pieces a little at a time till they're all tight. And the reason for that is sometimes if you tighten one piece of hardware before you begin to tighten the others, it'll kind of throw things cockeyed. And uh, then you wind up loosening it all anyway to fix it. It's kind of like when you put together one of those metal sheds. You know, if you've ever put one of those together or those metal carports, you know that that shed or that carport is not rigid, is not solid until you put the last screw in, man. 
That thing will be wiggly and loose until the very last screw is in place and tightened. I built several of those and I know. Alright, these grommets are going to work out perfectly. Okay, I'm, I've come up against the bushing there. Bushing there. That's great because you don't over squish the grommet. Is that a word? Over squish? I don't know. Somebody look that up please. Let me know. Alright, there we go. It's all set. All good. All set and ready to go. Now remember, of course, that this here mounts rigidly to that uh, to that front plate that all the uh, shutter dial stuff is on, okay? So you don't need to worry about this little movement here because that will be gone when the thing is mounted. Um, so we're getting, uh, we're getting pretty close to getting where we'll clean this up here. We'll change this stuff out and clean this up here. And then we'll be able to start working on that shutter dial. Well, it's time for me to go take my shower and get ready for tomorrow work, man. Uh, Monday, yeah, fun. But, uh, you know, that's how we make our living, right? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll get back to the video tomorrow. All right, folks, I am going to mix up a little bit of cleaning, uh, cleaner and lubricant for this guy right here. I'm going to do it with a Q-tip so I can mix up just a little batch here. Lots of people have suggested rather than using mineral spirits that I try a little bit of um, fine machine oil. Well, I happen to have a little container of it here. So I'll put a little bit of machine oil in there and then some lacquer thinner to help uh, carry it where I need it to go and to help with the cleaning. So there we go. Now the two are mixed. I'm not sure how well they're mixed. That oil wants to ball up in there. But I know that's a, a uh, petroleum product, yep. So, all right. It's not a big deal because it is, it is uh, dissolving into the lacquer thinner as we go. I take some Q-tips here and just start to work on it. it. Cleans it nicely. Gets all that crap off of there pretty well. And remember, that oil is on there. So those of you that were worried about lubricating this, I think that's what I'm doing. gentle about it and just get in there the best you can without getting too excited you want to damage any of these contacts I mean it's only a tone control but it doesn't matter you still don't want to damage it and uh, the uh, q-tip will catch on stuff so one thing I can do same thing I did before dip this in there and then do a little bit of this action with the acid brush just to get it started anyway And then I'll start operating it in a second. I just kind of want to get this started. All right, so let's put a little bit on there now. We'll operate the thing. Okay, let's put a wrench on it. These are always easier to operate with a miniature crescent wrench on there. And let me put a little bit more of this. And then we just operate it. You can see by making some tracks that it is cleaning just like Deoxit does. Looks like somebody got after this thing with the grease too. Unbelievable. People will grease anything that moves, man. So I'm getting in there with this uh, lacquer thinner and oil. And uh, the oil will make it feel and work smoothly. The lacquer thinner will help clean it. 
these contacts are, I mean, this isn't a contact right here where I'm at, but these still matter. This is the detent that I'm cleaning right now. People will put grease on every, anything, man. I mean, what? it's just there's grease all over in this thing, and I don't know why. It's not required. Okay, get this good and wet again. And we'll do this. You see the tracks that it's cleaning off right there. That's a good thing. Now it looks like this terminal got kind of cockeyed, but it's tight. Yeah, I'll break it if I horse with it. I don't want that. I'm going to replace that capacitor in a minute. See right in here there are some contacts too. I want to get that side clean if I can as well. Let me mix up a little more of my little concoction. It seems to be working pretty well. Yeah. But as far as I want to go with that, get this side. Okay, I think I've gotten that pretty much as clean as I'm going to get it. And it's working real nice, and I bet this thing operates a lot better now. Now I'm going to have to replace that capacitor and that resistor, of course. But I wanted to get this mess out of the way first. Now I'll probably put a little lubricant down this shaft, just a tiny bit, since it's so easy to get to. So let me do that real quick. Just a drop, nothing more. Sounds pretty good now, pretty definite. Before you couldn't hardly, when I first tested this, you couldn't even feel the detents. Okay, let me go ahead and get that capacitor swapped out. And uh, then we can call this thing good. Get these wires out of the way temporarily. I want to be careful not to flex them too much or they'll break. Two leads of the capacitor are that, or uh, this terminal here and this terminal right there. So that's no big deal. I'll just clip this bugger off of there and remove those wires. I might do the coil method here. Let me see just how easy it is to get it to everything. Get these cleaned off. What we have here is a .003. Of course, it's a 400 volt. No, that's no big deal. That I'm going to use a .0033. That's the closest I have to that. That little bit of difference won't make it, won't, won't affect it at all, especially in a tone control. I'll measure this resistor, and if this resistor is okay, I'll just leave it in there. But if it's not, it comes out. So 
So let me do that now. That's supposed to be a 470 or 47K. Again, tone control, you have some wiggle room because you really just, I mean, you don't want to be too far out because then it won't sound good. But you do have some wiggle room. That's there. And there. Okay. What I have is 50.2K. So that's about uh, 3.2 off out of 47K. Yeah, I can live with that. That's less than 10% off, so we're okay there. I'll go ahead and shut, just leave that right in there and just replace the capacitor. Don't get too wild there. He's a nut. No, don't get too wild. And he just likes to see it spin. He's a weird little cat. How can you say he's weird? Look at that face. And when it That's stops, he makes it go face. again, see? He doesn't like it to stop. To stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lunatic. Now he's going to go bother Buster. Buster. Don't hurt Buster. Buster's washing, so he's got to go get him. Right on top of him. You see his head turning sideways? Uh oh. Well, you're kind of boring, Freddie. <laughs> oh, now he's all satisfied washing. Oh, these cats are boring.